three main groups in London. You've got the London Vampire Meetup Group, the London Vampire Group, and the Vampire Connection. Vampire Connection and the London Vampire Group were formed maybe 15 years ago now from the Dracula Society, which broke at the time into two fractions. There's enough people to go around. In fact, you see all the same faces and all the same groups. We're, we're very friendly rivals, if you will. Uh, we're basically a sort of social club for people that are into vampires, the books, the movies, all sort of aspects to do with vampires. Oh, old legends and we just meet up once a month, occasionally do other activities and just socialise really. We have a complete broad spectrum. Some do come from the goth camp. We have what I would guess are more romantic elements, um, cyber, all, all sorts of things with the overriding vampiric interest. The vampire circle itself, the three groups, the vampire connections meet up and connections are all groups that will accept most people, but the, there are underground groups that just will not talk to people, um, and they are the ones that actually do more of the blood drinking than any. Someone who's a member of the Vampire Group, yeah. would there be any bands that particularly... Probably Crayla Field. Uh, <laughs> Fetus Death Vampires, definitely. I'd say they're the best um, group in their field. And um, you saw them at the Slime Light? Uh, it wasn't, I've seen them many times. I've, you know, I saw them at the Slime Light the last time they played, but the first time I saw them was um, the original lineup, and that was when um, Sonia Scarlet cut her wrist and she let members of the audience drink her blood, and she, and she nearly got sort of banned. Because of? Because of that. You know, she puts like meth methylated spirits in the Bible and she like sets fire to it and and they used to do rituals, but they're a little bit more um, kind of like mellowed out compared to how they used to be. But I would say they're, they're definitely the leading light of the musically. On the, the vampire perspective. Definitely, I'd say they're yeah. the best in their field. For people who don't know the difference between a goth and a vamp, could you explain? Right, goths are into um, metal that's like dark music. We're more into the ethereal music. Um, we like, um, I can't speak for everybody of course, but I prefer to listen to a lot of the ethereal, the, um, I like Theatre of the Vampires, um, but I like also the Requiem music and things like that, that are from the past. It's stuff that makes you feel comfortable. In one of my lives, I make prosthetic fangs. Um, they are, they're made out of dental acrylic and these particular ones are little caps that slide over the ordinary teeth. Would you like to pop one out? A hard luck, I'm not going to. <laughs> really? Really. Okay, fair enough. Got to maintain the illusion, you know. The famous case of the Highgate Vampire. Now there was so much interest in that case, not only local interest, but national interest, that we decided to start a separate society to just to deal with people interested in the case of the so-called Highgate Vampire. There's definitely something active around, or should I say, in and around Highgate Cemetery. In other words, when figure wasn't actually seen at or around the cemetery, but people had peculiar experiences in there. People that were underground in the underground groups tended to like try and mingle with the goth groups of the 80s and then a few things happened. I think there was a lad that had his ear ripped off, a lower ear in fact, um, and it was put down to the fact that at the time there was a lot of people in the club that had fangs and was associated with vampire groups. And so we got a lot of negative. And then people started disappearing and everything went underground again and like we disappeared for quite a while. The newspapers went hysterical between the Highgate vampire and everything else. It got to the stage where it was almost like a witch hunt. So if you look different, 
um, you acted different, you looked like you was into that kind of thing, you'd get harassed a lot. With people who believe that they are vampires, that's not just those people who are sort of goths, but just interested in vampires. And those who think they are vampires, usually they regard themselves as Satanists as well. And that vampirism is a cult led by Satan. And, but however, I would say that to a great extent they live as if they were in a movie. And certainly they dress as if they were sort of about to be, take part in a Hammer horror film. What's your impression, Steve? Of, of, of the, uh, well, the Church of Satan. Um, I, I don't really know. I've, I actually own a copy of the Satanic Bible. I think it's a very, very good book. There's a lot of truths in the book. Very interesting. But, but, but I'm not an expert, you know, on it, you know, like our friend here, but by no means. But I think there's a lot of good, um, valid points in there. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, definitely, yeah. You know, like earlier we were talking yeah. about um, sort of like there's, there are seen some connections between the vampire group and Satanism. Yeah. And it's pretty, in a way, the more I look into it, the more yeah. I kind of think, well, is, you know, it's an interest in the dark side. There's, there's more to it than just like the films and, you know, like you say, you've got a copy of the Satanic Bible. Yeah, well, you I, call think yourself it's, a I think it's a very, no, no, I wouldn't call myself a Satanist, but, but I think it's very, um, a very good book. You know, where it says, don't turn the other cheek. You know, he who turns his cheek is a cowardly bastard. You know, scorn for scorn, basically. And I think that's a, a very good way, yeah. which is totally con contradicts Christianity and stuff. They're definitely in that way, yeah. People, they, yeah. They, they, they've got like, okay, I've done wrong, I'm going to the confession, everything will yeah. be right. No, it's not. Yeah. Not What's everyone has to go to church. Mm -hmm. You can just be a good person, a proper human, but just on your own way. You don't need a God for it. Everything yeah. coming from the logic point of view and is based on a human nature. And, and that's good. You don't need to be an expert or professor to yeah. understand that. It's very simple. Yeah. It's always been the same in human nature. Things that people cannot understand, they fear. And what they fear, they ultimately condemn. Satanism, for example, which is a very real thing. I'm not talking about the theatrical Satanists you read about in the news of the world, dressed up in robes and lighting black candles. I'm talking about the real thing, that is groups of people that are dedicated to the powers, as, as they see it, of evil of evil forces because they're not on that ascension they're on the descension to use the word quite physically hell oh yes they do drink blood and also they apparently get in some cases seem to get a mystical experience out of drinking blood in our group we don't do that. We actively, dis well, we don't actively encourage members to drink other people's blood. But some people, well, it's lost right. track. Um, uh, yeah, similar with a lot of things, what people do in their own bedroom is up to them. Some people probably do, but it's not brought into the group format and we don't want it in the group format, that's not what we're about. Um, what people get up to in their private life is entirely up to them. They, they might be blood drinkers, they might beat each other, they might play golf for all I know. It, 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 it's not part of what the groups are about though. We're very, very firmly against that as an organisation. You might imagine that disenfranchised people find their way here looking for real vampires or blood drinkers or anything like that. This is the 21st century. To, to actually try something like that would be insane these days. Most of the people we have here are insane. <laughs> are. Um, most of the people we have here are very sane. Occasionally people do come along. We, we, we are quite a broad church and we kind of take them under our wings as, as the sort of elders, um, as in we're old. <laughs> um, it, it's beholden on us to make sure that they do understand it's a game, it's a fantasy. This is for people who like to read about things that don't exist. In my private life, I'm a lot more um, argumentative you, you, and more aggressive in my ways. Um, I hunt quite well but it's always if it's Willie. 
if it's not willing, I don't touch. <laughs> Could you just tell me a little bit more about hunting? Right. Um, obviously, we have a hunger. Most people tend to have, there's an artificial blood out there that works on a lot of people. Um, they do have people that can work in hospitals that can get them blood. Um, but there's also um, people out there that are willing to be donors. That's a lot easier. Um, but if we're immensely hungry and we haven't got a donor, we will go look for someone that is willing to like let us play. It's like a um, essence of life, really. Um, you never drink to the extent that there's like you you make the meal. Um, it's a matter of if you drink often enough you don't need lots and plus there's the two types there's the lot that drink blood and then there's the lot that are like psychic vampires that just take energy um is it just the sort of people who, who literally drink blood i don't know any one personally who does that you know i mean i'm you know, the nearest to blood you know sort of blood i would drink is red wine good strong you know like country wine but that's as, that's as far as it would go with me in 1991, for an evening out, I went to a fetish club in Shepherd's Bush. So I met a few people that I knew already who were sort of regarding themselves as vampires. Now, later on in the evening, there was a, a performance by the Temple of Psychic Youth, as they call themselves. Anyway, I, in the middle of the performance, I wandered off and three of these vampires we were going to the ladies' toilets, two men and a woman. But anyway, I went back to the stage and it was finally the climax of a man took his clothes off and started cutting himself with a knife. Anyway, there was this man next to me whose legal name apparently was Charons and Dion Set Glacier Labalas Vanian. But he was known to his friends as Wilf. So I wandered off and wanted to see what they were doing in the ladies' toilets. And then it said there was a woman, though she was called Damien, she suddenly came out and said, Get Wilf, tell him this feed here. Now, you probably know I'm as green as a fig leaf. I thought, if they got a packet of sandwiches, what's the excitement about that? But anyway, I went and got Wilf. And we went in there and there was a woman, Juliet, and then was sitting on the wash basin with her arms distended and there was this big syringe of blood that they'd just taken out of her. And there was this sort of elderly, distinguished looking grey haired man who was wearing nothing but a G string, who I was told afterwards had been masturbating over the site. And there was a man in black leather who looked rather puzzled. In fact, there's nearly all men in this lady. He said, What had they injected into her? And they said with a macabre laugh, It's not what they injected in, it's what they took out. Anyway, what they did was they squirted the blood over their, each other's hands and licked it off. And apparently we're sort of going into sort of, you know, mystical ecstasies of drinking some blood. At the end of the day, we are a group of people that enjoy the whole thing of vampirism, from the history to the folklore, um, to the the culture, everything. It, it's it's not all about like just drawing the blood. It's to do with the whole way of life. It's a part of a society that's kind of gone now.